Hey everybody, it's Sai here from Happy Accident Studios, and today I am in full science lab mode. Now, what's happened? Let me explain. I was just at McDonald's getting lunch with my daughter, and in the Happy Meal was this watch device. It's a digital watch, but it's encased in a plastic cover, and the idea of it was that there was a choice of two stickers you could put on the top of this with a little hole so you could still see the time. And it was either Green Lantern or Hello Kitty as Supergirl. I didn't want either of those. What I want is a funky, arty style, my style timepiece so that I don't, I'm not late for the school run and stuff. I'm going to keep it in the car so that I can shut the car off while I'm waiting outside and not waste the battery just so I'll have a clock. So this is gonna be my little crafty looking, I hope, on time clock. Now, my plan today, and I hope this doesn't backfire, my plan is to somehow dissolve the adhesive on this and take this plastic lid off, decorate the inside very flatly, and then put the lid back on and glue it back on. So, I have no idea what they use to stick these things together, but um, I'm pretty sure that if you're sticking plastic things together, whatever glue you use is probably removable with good old acetone. So, I've got some of that. I've also got some way too big for your ear cotton swabs. So, I'm just gonna give this a go, try and dissolve this, and hopefully I will have a canvas on which to work. So, ooh, that stinks. Don't use harsh chemicals if you are underage or incredibly stupid. I might have just excluded myself from using this. Okay, now... I'm going to work furthest away from many electrical points. So I'm just going to see what happens. Maybe some of this glorious acetone will work its way into the glue holding it together. I'll tell you what it is doing. It's slightly, ever so slightly, and you can't probably even see it because my lighting is harsh in here. It's ever so slightly taking some of the yellow color off of the outside of this. And if that turns out to be a thing, then I might be working on this a little bit longer because I don't like the yellow. And if it comes off with acetone, that's great. I don't know how long I'm going to be at this, really. If you're bored, get something... Listen out for my eureka moment. <laughs> the other thing is it does, um, there are some screws here. But I have a feeling that that has nothing to do with this clear lid coming off. Because I can't see the end of the screws. So, must have very little to do with it. I'm just going to keep working at this. For a bit. I'm, I'm against the idea of submerging it because it's, you know, at the end of the day there's a battery in there. <laughs> I don't really want to mess with that. Acetone evaporates too, so got to be quite quick about it, I think. I hope the acetone doesn't also meddle with the, the clarity of the plastic. Sometimes it can. That's why I'm not touching the top of it at all. Right. 
it feels a bit sticky on the outside not gonna lie um, ew. I may have like melted some of the plastic away with it or that could just be the uh, glue overspill in which case it's doing its job which is fantastic okay if there's any kids watching um, and you want to do this get a parent to do it because this stuff is like not too good for you okay um, I'm going to try and prize it off with this craft knife um, be careful with sharp blades I don't know who I'm telling but you know it's a good idea. So if you hear a weird um, squealing noise, that's actually my um, my hard drive. It makes funny noises sometimes. Hmm. I don't even know if this is cutting straight. I'm just making little marks in it. I was kind of hoping this would come out. Hmm. I do have an alternate plan should this not work. Um, oh, apparently there's a stopwatch function on this. Great, um, I guess. Hmm. Now there's this thing here and that would come off. If there was something I could, maybe I should get a screwdriver. I don't know. I don't know if it would, it would help matters at all if I got a screwdriver. I really don't. Um, some of these screw holes are actually Phillips head and some of them are triangular. Like, what? I don't know. I'm not gonna break it. Um, hmm because science it is working it is working i'm telling you that the acetone is indeed working let me just pour a little bit into it this bit there we go and i got a little bit there hopefully that won't that won't be too won't evaporate too much there we go I think the more I slather on there, the better it will work. Isn't this fun watching glue melt, hopefully? I don't know. Hmm. Something is smelling interesting. Now, I don't know a lot about, um, you know, plastic or organic chemistry. <laughs> 
but uh, I'm, I'm sincerely hoping that I'm making some kind of headway with this thing. Because I would far prefer to decorate the underneath of this plastic housing. I am getting through. Sorry if I get quiet, but I'm concentrating. That's definitely going through now. I can see it. I don't know if that's because the plastic itself is melting or if I'm finally getting through the glue. But something is occurring. Maybe just a little acetone and a little patience makes all the difference. Try the next side a bit more. This looks really good. Starting to look like progress. Though I gotta say, the quality of the plastic is going downhill as I do this. Could I be making an inlay way into this thing? I would love the answer to be a resounding yes. But in all honesty, I'm not sure. Hmm. Trying to keep my fingers away from this. Safety first. I'm not entirely convinced that if this comes off, I'll get it back on. Is it time yet for plan B? I'm thinking it might be. Hmm. What is this? Now I know I could get this strap off of it if I take out the piece that has the triangular screw on it. But, golly, um, I 
Yeah, I think that this acetone is probably melting the yellow plastic rather than softening any glue. So, yeah, we just have to work on the front then. Cool, so let's get to the art part then. Um, this is plastic, and when you're working on plastic, you don't have a lot of options if you want things to stick. So, um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is use some kind of outliner so that I don't end up coloring the bit that's over the clock piece. So I've got this um, this glass paint outliner. So I think I'm just going to quickly go over that area with the glass paint outliner. And I think I'm going to make it slightly bigger than the uh, clock aperture itself because when you look at it from different angles, you're going to miss some of the time otherwise. So I'm going to make the aperture larger. Not entirely sure how long that takes to dry, but should I add designs to it? Should I leave it like that? Hmm, I don't know. It's serving a purpose, it's got a function. I think I'll just leave it. And I'm gonna start coloring places other than that aperture. So I'm going to get um, what I've got here are alcohol based inks and some of them are mixatives so I need to shake them up. There's little ball bearings in each one and uh, once those ball bearings are freed I should be able to shake them properly. Um, just so you know these are Adirondack alcohol inks. Uh, they're um, signed the labels here um, have like a Tim Holtz signature on them. I don't know whether they're still called Adirondack alcohol ink or whether he's got the distress label on them now. These are quite old. I've been using Ranger products for a really long time. Um, absolutely love them. In fact, recently I am I'm really, really impressed with their customer service. I thought I might just mention it in case any other um, people are watching. Um, that, you know, that use Ranger products or are thinking of using Ranger products, go for it. Because if you ever have any questions or problems, their customer service is absolutely second to none. Recently, um, I had some ink destabilize and I didn't think any, I didn't think there was anything to be done about it. So I just kind of left it. And then I was reading somewhere online that someone else's ink destabilized and they contacted Ranger and uh, the ranger asked a few questions, asked you to provide some photos of the product and just describe what's happened and give them the lot number so that they can look into it. And um, more often than not, they'll send you a replacement out for free. Um, I've had confirmation um, that my, um, my replacements are actually going to be on their way. And it was it was just a snap really and uh, the staff there are friendly and it's um of all the ranger products that i own um I've, it's such a rare thing to have anything go wrong with them Whoop. i've only really um i've got i don't know maybe 50 to 100 ranger products individual products and only two of them have have gone wrong and I've replaced them like with like, and those likes have not gone wrong. So it's just a matter of sometimes you get a nasty dye lot and, or whatever it is, and um, the formulation doesn't, doesn't play ball or whatever, I guess. I don't know. I'm not an expert, but they, whatever it is, they solve it for you. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Right. Um, Ranger 
Alcohol Ink has a really fantastic um, applicator. It looks like an old vintage stamp and it's got a hook and loop fastening on it and you put some felt on it and then you kind of stamp around. But this is such a tiny area that I am going to use these big chubby cotton swabs. Um, this color is like a dark blue, it's called denim. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dab it on a bit, see what happens. It looks like I might need to prime the surface a bit, I don't know. But because there's yellow um, peeking through, this is going to take quite a, quite a lot of layering, I think, to get a good effect on it. So we shall see. All I'm doing right now is I'm trying to steer well clear of any um, of the glass paint liner because I need to give it time to dry. And this, it's going on and it might look a bit odd right now, but it's, it's going on. And as I layer it up, I think it's going to get really interesting. So we'll find out. The good thing about the alcohol ink and a thing I've always loved about it is that you can just keep layering it, keep experimenting with it. If you want to, if you wanted to sort of water it down a bit, there is actually a blending solution and um, it helps it to mix. I'm going to keep adding little layers of this. Um, I'm also going to go in with some lighter blue because the denim is a bit dark. But it's making a lovely texture on the front. Not entirely sure how the sides are behaving at the minute, but it's interesting because the acetone seems to have given it a bit of a tooth. So, I don't know, I might, I might put some acetone on the front, I don't know. At this point, I would be worried about the consequences of mixing my chemicals. Um, so I'm just going to leave it, I think. Start adding some more layers of other colors on here. And see what happens. Now this one is called Stream, and this is one of my favorite ones as well. I love the color in this. It's like a turquoise color, and I'm just going to add it on top here. Put some in here as well. Maybe put a little bit on the very, very tip of this just to get in to the smaller areas, see how that works. Can you see that it's kind of, it's got a bit of a veiny sort of texture to it. I'm going to keep on with this.
may come back in with the dark as well. But I love the look of it. I love that it's, um, I believe he called it, Tim, Tim Holtz, when he did this technique on his uh, videos, he called it the polished agate look. And if you do this on a glossy cardstock, it's fantastic. Great look. going to put some directly on the yellow as well just to see what happens I decided not to use any kind of orange or brown or green because I knew that if I used blue on this yellow it was going to come out green and green anyway and I didn't want to encourage it because I was kind of hoping for a bit of a turquoise you know my typical three favorite colors together like turquoise um cobalt blue and um like a violet together but i don't know it's going to take a bit of patience i think to get this really the way i want it but i'm going to keep going because i'm in no, i'm in no hurry today it kind of almost matches the strap now which I may or may not keep. I'm still not entirely sure. I'm also still working very carefully around the um, the aperture so that that um, so that that black liner dries. I don't want to interfere too much with it at this point. Um, might go in with some of this wild plum color. It's uh, like a magenta almost. Um, hope nothing terrible happens as a result. Um, I mean, this is just whoop, testament to how good this ink is. Um, I haven't opened this one, and I, I could say with confidence, haven't opened it for years. And it works just like the first day I bought it. So if you're worried at all, don't be. It's, it's fantastic stuff. And I just I, I meant to only add that in a little bit as like an accent color <laughs> and it's kind of gone everywhere because I didn't expect it to be flowing so freely um, because of its age. Really, really impressed, really pleased. Um, because I do quite a lot of crafting and I do quite I use a lot of different products and techniques. I find that I do dip into them, each one of them on a on a quite a, a rare occasion. So what happens is, you know, sometimes age does get to them. But these, these Ranger inks are, they're just surprising me at every turn. I'm really pleased, really impressed. Um, let's see what happens if I just allow a drop to go there. That's exactly where I didn't want it to go. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, you know what? This is what makes it fun. <laughs> right. Let me just wipe that off a little bit. And if it doesn't fully come off, obviously, I've got my blending solution, which also acts as a cleaner. But that is kind of cool. And I do like that. Just uh, clean off this bit. I'll be able to clean it more later. I should have just dripped it on in the first place. Quite a nice coverage. And if I just keep moving it, maybe blot some of it away. This is what I'm talking about. It is quite workable. It looks a bit muddy over there. So I'm gonna add some more of this one that gave me a kind of a green look last time. Go back in there with that. Okay. 
maybe let that dry a bit. Where's the it is I don't know if you notice this, but I'm getting quite inky. <laughs> Some of this may come off with the cleaning fluid. Some of it may not. Lucky, lucky me. Um, this is looking quite cool now. Look at that. Funky. Funky, funky, monkey. I was really hoping on making um, a really nice sort of collage with it. Um, and then encasing it underneath the plastic, but as we couldn't free the plastic, it's not going to happen. So, ah well. At least I can have some nice alcohol ink. That is fantastic teeny tiny bit more of the blue where are you i just gave it a new little new dab there it is Ooh, nice. Ooh. Now it's starting to do fun things. Ooh, what do we got there? I didn't see that happen. Ooh. Just checking around the edge now, see what other surprises I've left for myself. Nothing. Good. Not this. One little drop there. And we'll see what happens. Nope. Not happy with that. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, but that I don't think I'm going to touch much more because I think that looks pretty good. Um, oh, but wait. Pearl Mixative. You know when someone says you should leave well enough alone? Yeah, I don't do that. Let's see what happens here with the pearl. Whoop. I'm just going to leave that. Give it a bit of a drip. Encourage it to kind of drip down a bit. Very nice. And that's going to be adding a little extra sort of, I don't know, pearlescence to it, I guess. I hope. I like how it changes. I do kind of want a bit more of this bottle, uh, not bottle, um, stream color in here. I'm worried a little bit that there might be too much. <laughs> not as good as I should be at controlling this. Maybe 
a little bit just there. <laughs> I want it to get right up to the window, but not too far so that it goes over. Now that is starting to look pretty awesome. I'm quite thrilled with that. Maybe some, I don't know. I mean, you know, I could, I could stop there. I really could, but I probably won't. Um, maybe a little silver and gold or just maybe just some, I don't know, just some gold, maybe. I don't know. I think it looks pretty fantastic compared to what it was. Um, but, hmm. I'm also definitely going to get rid of this this watch band from the bottom um, because I want to make it into something, I don't know, maybe something I can stand up and I don't think, I don't know, the handle kind of helps it to stand up a little bit, but I'm not sure. This is my creative process, people. Um, a rare look inside my mind, I suppose. Um, I'm gonna try and um, mix up this silver mixative. Um, meanwhile, I will rotate this fantastic piece of art. We. So that you can see it. Pearlescent mixative is pretty, um, pretty good. I add some more blue over the top of it. Ha <laughs> ha, because I can't control myself. A um, little bit. A little bit. Whoa. A little bit too much. Again. Oh, yeah. Mm, loving it. Oh, wow. I like how it's mixing just up here in the corner. Can you see it? Wow. That is excellent. Might have to add just a little bit more of the old magenta just down here. Whoops. I made a mess again, but it looks fantastical, a fantastic mess, a fantastic mess, a pearlescent mess, wow, see the thing is the more you layer this stuff, the more it really starts to take on, you know, a life of its own. It is so gorgeous, if I say so myself. <laughs> Something I've made, I'm going, this is so gorgeous. But I just love the way that you can play with this stuff. If you've never heard of alcohol ink, where have you been, first of all? And second of all, welcome. This is awesome. I use these things so so um infrequently that i do forget like i said before i do forget how amazing it is how much fun it is to do this um i might seal this later with something that has no alcohol in it so that so i don't ruin it um there is something called blending is it blending medium or blending solution that you can put on this and it will just sort of like even it out and um, I don't want it to do that I quite like how bitty it is and it just it it's cool it looks like some weird alien rock now and that's not bad for a happy meal toy I might even put it on a pretty uh, chain or something like I've got some some um, interesting yarn like decorative yarn I might crochet myself a little loop for it 
maybe turn it into a bit of jewelry. Wear it around my neck. I don't know. Where'd the lid to that go? I'm so bad at, at keeping my things straight now. That's actually the lid to that. Okay. And this is the lid to this. Am I right? I'll find out. Nope, it wasn't. <laughs> it was the, oh, I've got all my lids mixed up now. See this, this is what you need your mixing solution for, your blending solution. It's to clean up messes like this. Let me go grab it and I'll show you how it works. Where do you have your bone blending solution? Here you are. This is the blending solution. I reckon it's just the alcohol without the ink in it. Um, but you know, where else are you going to get it? So I just squirted a bit onto this paper towel and it is coming off. You see that? It is cleaning the ink off, but I'm not going to be too, too precious about it because these are the colors I use all the time. And uh, this is what happens when all the lids are the same color. <laughs> ah. um, very important that you stay away from fire or heat sources when you're doing this. Just thought I'd throw that in there for your safety. All right, how am I doing shaking up my silver mixative? You can see that the sediment is still down at the bottom. Um, don't, don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's sort of, it's still sort of layered. And inside this bottle somewhere, there are some ball bearings, and it may be that they are still submerged um, in this sediment. So you kind of just have to swirl it around until you hear them and then really go for it when you shake it. That is, if you don't mind bubbles. If you do mind bubbles, then you're just going to have to rotate like this, I think, and just keep it going around and around if you are if you don't like the idea of, of doing that. Oh, I heard it. Can you hear it? I have freed. I have freed them. Oh, nice. There is still quite a lot of sediment on the bottom. But I think it's that the stuff is so highly pigmented that I actually think it'll be fine. Let me just put the lid back on my mixing stuff. This is really pretty. I should probably use that for something at some point. I mean, the thing is, if you are journal, you probably never throw anything away. <laughs> I think I am a bit like that. Oh, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm worried. I'll start. I'll try it on the side. There we go. Yeah, that's that's a lot. <laughs> that is quite a lot. Wow. Wow, is that silvery. Whew. Oh, here's the thing. You see how silvery that is? <laughs> right? I haven't even mixed it properly. There's still some silver stuck on the bottom. Watch this. I'm just going to drop a little bit of the mixing solution on it and just watch it go. See how it's kind of broken it up a bit? I don't know if you can see how it's mixing and rolling around, but that is what happens when you use the mixing solution. <laughs> and I've just blotted it all completely off that side, but that's okay because you can just start over. It is so much fun. Love it. I'm going to 
try a different thing. I'm going to put one tiny drop of this on. And I'm going to put one. And I'm going to put one tiny drop of that on. And I'm going to put one tiny drop of, that's not tiny. One tiny drop of that on. And then I'm going to mix it around and see what I can get. It is beautiful. Ooh. Now here's the thing. I do have a small amount on here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. There you go. I'm only getting a small amount on here because I want to make little like little veins like that. Can you see that? Now oh, there's like little sort of almost like little bits of sediment on it. You don't have to be exact with this, just, just whack it on. It's all good. It's one of those kind of just chill out and work it for a bit until it's the way you like it. And then please, if you like it, just stop, leave it alone because look what I've done. Oh dear. The front, as it should be, I think the front is the best part of this. So I think I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm going to photograph this in a better light so that you can see the colors a little bit better. Because in here, sadly, my camera does not pick up well. Just want to add a little bit more silver to this. Bit. <laughs> You're probably all shouting, stop, stop, it's good enough. And I think it is, and I am stopping. All right, let's see if I can get this onto a background where you could kind of see the colors. Because I think this thing is... This camera is constantly trying to white set itself or something. Um, can you see the colors there? Ooh, pretty. I don't know. But it's a long way from where it started as a yellow plastic thing. And it still clearly shows the time, which was my intention. I was going to just put a couple of little, like, words on it, just cute words, you know, like art or whatever. Um, and so I've got some old pages of books um, here because I do use book paper a lot in things. Um, this is just an old um, hardcover book that I got from um, a charity shop. So, or it might have even been in somebody's, like, in a box on the side of the road. Um, in our neighborhood, um, in London, what people used to do is um, they used to leave stuff they didn't want out in a box at the end of, you know, on their garden fence. And basically, it was just a known thing that if you wanted that, you would just pick it up. So, um, occasionally, I was I was looking specifically for um for books that have bits in it that are like the signatures of the book the, the groups of pages are sewn together 
because when you make altered books and you want to cut niches and things into them, it's important that the pages aren't held together with glue. A little snippet of uh, interesting thing for you. Hmm. This is like an arty kind of book, so what can I find? Just looking really carefully. Ooh, success. Success is good. I like that word. <laughs> Gossip. And that one's already dyed pink. <laughs> Um, there's a point. Maybe I should color this. Um, I swear I saw some really nice things. Uh, journey, journey. and things like that. So, this is awesome. So, journey, I've got this. I'm just gonna cut it out like that. Can you see me? I can see I'm doing anywhere. It's too far away for you to see that I'm cutting out the word journey. And cut along. Journey. And it's ever so slightly pink, which will go very nicely on here. Journey. I'm going to leave that for a second. Oh, heart. I like the word heart, too. Where's my super awesome thingy? Here it is. Where's heart? Heart. There it is. Great. I'm going to pop this on top of heart. And I'm just going to add another couple drops of this because... I think it needs it. A bit of blue in there. That's great. Okay, so I've got heart and journey. This isn't cutting all of a sudden, which does not fill me with confidence. Heart. Heart. Journey. Oh, how about cutting the AG off of that and just making it art journey? <laughs> Whoops, where's that? Oop. Art. Art journey. Fine. 
there's a fine word fine that's a good word um Sorry, I was so quiet today. Um, but you know, that's what streams are like sometimes. And I didn't really plan this, which is kind of fun. So let's see. No, I think art and journey are probably enough. I don't want to cover my background too much because I've spent so much time on it. So, I think I'm going to use, oh, do you know what? I'm probably, no, definitely, I'm definitely going to use liquid, what is it called? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Hold on. What have I got in here? Glossy accents, that's it. Glossy accents. And I've also got this fantastic liquid pearl in key lime, which is such a great color. So I might do something with that as well. Ooh. And I've got this distress stickles as well, which is a great color. It really does complement the rest of the ones I've used. So I think I'm going to go for that. <laughs> so much fun and this is what I like I like being in my studio with all my supplies and I know that I can just pop over and get this or that thing and get on with it I absolutely love it it's very rare that I get around to it you know I've got this lovely room and I don't use it nearly as much as I should really this is so much fun Okay, so I've got some, some tweezers here because I really don't want to mess with this once I start using the glossy accents. So, the glossy accents can be used as an adhesive but also as a glossy coating. And the way that I've done this, it might even look a bit like a bezel, which I will be very happy with, but I can't do it on the sides. I can only do it on the top. So I might have to find a different sealant for the sides. So right, here's my glossy accent. Sometimes you need a little needle just to poke it and get it going, but I think, I think we're all right with this. Just let it come down. Yep. Look at this stuff. Right. Now, I've just put a bubble of it down. I don't know if you can see. It's got a bit of a, like a cloudy, ultraviolet kind of color to it when it's wet. Um, it goes, it dries crystal clear. Love it. So, let's just pop this down. Journey. And one thing you don't want to do is get bubbles in this. This is not a, a bubble thing. Um, if you get them, you can pop them. But it's, it's just not something you really want to do. Um, it'll ruin the look. Now, where's my little... Here it is. My little word, art. And I did get a bubble, and you can't see it because I know you're too far away from me right now. But I do have a little bit of a bubble in my glossy accents, and I can't find it, which is probably a good thing, I guess. Okay, so I have stuck my words, art, and journey into a bubble of glossy accents and I am now going to complete my bubble of glossy accents. I'm just uh, using it 
to fill in the entire top. This is where I start breathing heavy because I'm concentrating. Da, 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 da. And you can, when you're working, it's important that you sort of drag a bead of this liquid with you rather than trying to start a new one. It's allow it to combine with itself um, with this use, using uh, the surface tension. Does this make any sense? Um, because it, it likes to stay stick together. Now I'm using a lot of this and you know this is this is really good stuff and I absolutely detest using things up but I may have to use this one up and buy a new one, which is fine. I guess I'll have a nice, fresh. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm gonna have to come back to you so that you can, so that you can see um, how this has worked. Because at the moment, when it's still wet, it is quite cloudy and a bit, a bit hazy. But once this dries, it's going to look like glass and it'll be perfect. I've got to keep it flat, but this is what it's going to be. So, wow. It needs to dry. I mean, really four to six hours but I would just leave it the full 24 just to be totally safe um, and we shall see what this looks like in our next episode how's that for continuity yeah um, I guess I'll tell you what's coming up next as well because I actually do know what's coming up next and um, that is the um, the double diamond fold card. So uh, if you want to follow along or just take some notes, please feel free uh, next time you watch me to have a notebook handy or, um, you know, just save it to your favorite videos or whatever. Um, I have been Sai. This has been Happy Accident Studios, um, Craft Room Live, I guess, um, because I really didn't have, I had a vague plan today, but it changed and this is what it changed into and I'm very happy. Um, you can find me on, um, in what is it, Instagram, Pinterest, Vine, and Twitter, at Hapax Studios, that's H-A-P-A-X Studios. Um, that is also my Twitch name and my uh, YouTube channel is Happy Accident Studios. Look for the pink handprint. And also I'm on Facebook, Happy Accident Studios. Uh, again, it's a it's a pink handprint. And uh, let's see, where else can you get me? I am online, www.happyaccidentstudios.co.uk. Um, I I don't do this usually, but I do teach uh, paper crafts and crochet um, in the local area of Medway in Kent in the UK. So if you're around, hit me up, drop me a line, Sy S Y at happyaccidentstudios.co.uk and uh you know let's party um <laughs> i think I, I have a good time here i can't lie um this is my craft table and i'm glad that you're here to join me um oh what what was that hazmat do you want to say something hi hazmat what is it that you want to say Hazmat say you cray cray. I do wish you'd be more positive, Hazmat, but thank you very much. Wee wee. Hazmat. Hazmat just got into my bez my bezel.
But look, doesn't look like Harry has Matt gone into my bezel, does it? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> you little scamp, trying to ruin my fun. Aw. Well, I'm sure Hazmat will have something to say about our, our work next time. Next time, like I said, double diamond fold card. It appeared in a craft magazine recently, and um, it appeared with the wrong measurements in it. So I thought I'd combine that with how to use the hoogie board to create the card. So my next episode for you is going to be hoogie nights. Woohoo! Come hoogie with me. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.